Well, I figured I'd take it for a quick rip if I couldn't do the brakes. And even that didn't work out. We got coolant leaking from somewhere. Yay. What's up guys? Welcome back to Rear Engine Shop where we're actually working on a Fiero today. We are working on my wide body 84 Fiero. And today we are going to be doing a brake upgrade. This specifically is the LeBaron brake upgrade because it uses LeBaron rotors. We have the rotors here. We have aluminum hubs. The guy on the Furo Forum makes. They come, they come with the races pressed in, wheel studs pressed in, and it comes with new bearings and seals. We have the caliper brackets, and we have the Wilwood caliper that came with the, uh, the brake pads. I think all together we have I don't know, 800, 850 bucks into this. This is just the front, and I need to do some more research to see what will work to keep the parking brake in the rear on this. So, our first step is gonna be to get this thing set and on the lift and get the front wheels off. So here's the factory 84 through 87 Furo brakes. You can see how tiny the rotor is. I mean, compare it to my hand. And then you can see they're solid, non-vented. The hub is part of the rotor. And then if we go over here, and we open up these brake rotors. You can see these are vented. And you can see here, they are a bit bigger than the factory rotors. And also these calipers, these. First off, the red. It has a uh, bigger piston, more clamping force, and it's gonna look better back behind there. So what we have to do, so we have to get this caliper off, get the rotor off, and then we can uh, pack the bearings and get the bearings installed in a hub and then that on the car and then we can put the rotor on the car and then we can put the caliper bracket on the caliper on then we're done with one side we just have to bleed them out after that so let me sandblast these brackets and get them painted and then we can get on to taking this apart, getting the hubs put on. Packing wheel bearings. You take your wheel bearing, it's fresh out of the package, no grease on it. You take a blob of grease in your hand, put it in your palm, and you just kind of work it. You smash the bearing basically down into the grease and into your palm. And you work it until you can see grease coming out the opposite side. And then you just slowly move around the bearing until you've coated the whole thing. It's a nice and messy job. You want to make sure you wear gloves. Because if you don't wear gloves, your hands will be a disaster. So I have it all the way around. 
And then we drop it. So we have to put these seals in the rear. They go here. Just gotta tap them in here. Find something that's the right to use, is that? Oh. I do, it's right here. Now we just have to pack the outer bearings. Now we just, let's get the caliper off. And then this cap comes off, cotter pin comes out, the nut comes off, the washer comes off, and then the whole rotor can come off. So let's do that. And then after I get the caliper off, the bracket, the caliper bolts too comes off, and I'm pretty sure the dust shield's gotta come off because the new rotor is bigger than that dust shield. So let's get this torn apart. All right, so here we are, rotor's off. This is your spindle, so I drop my light. I got the backing plate off of it, kind of clean it up. Looks like it's in good shape. Now what we need to do is we need to put our new hub on. So let's grab one of these. This will just slide on here like so. And then this is our washer. It's got a little notch that goes in this groove. So we put that on. And then this is our nut. We put our nut on. I almost wonder if I should just trim that backing plate down. So that's the general gist of it here. Just have to take some tin snips or whatever and trim this edge off. And then it might uh, clear that rotor. All right, so I was going to town in my tin snips, and then I thought, wait a minute, you have your plasma cutter home, finally. So, zip that off with the plasma cutter, and uh, bolted it back on, bolted the hub on, got the nut torqued down the right way. We got no play, but it's not too tight. Got the cap on it. We're ready to go. So now we just have to get the rotor on it, and then our adapter bracket for the caliper is bolted on, then we can bolt the caliper on. And then once we do that, we can take this bolt loose for the brake line and bolt up the new caliper. That way you don't leak all your fluid out while you're doing all this. Let's do that stuff.
All right, there you go. Driver's side's on. It's gravity bleeding. Now we just have to hope it clears the 16 inch wheels after it gravity bleeds here a little bit. Hopefully it uh, stops better than it did before. You'd get about one good brake application, hard application, and then after that it was it was pretty sketchy, especially with the 3800 in this car. So let's hope this improves on that some. Looks pretty good too. I guess we should see if it fits behind the wheel. <laughs> well, crap. It's a certain level of frustration that I'm at right now. Ugh. So, you can use wheel spacers, I suppose, but these wheels are designed to fit this body kit. So if I use wheel spacers, it'll push them out too far. Dang it. Like that's not even close. They were a good half inch back there. Ugh. Well, I guess we put the factory brakes back on for now. Man, what a bummer. Yeah, you can see back in here. You can see the caliper back there. And it is hitting on the wheel when I try to push the wheel on all the way. Failure. Son of a biscuit. Well, I've kind of wanted different wheels for this car. So I guess I'll put the factory brakes back on it so I can actually use the car. And save my money and get different wheels for it. I don't know if anybody got any suggestions out there. I'm going to put this video up even though it's a failure. Damn it, I am not happy right now. Oh, all right, well, I guess that concludes this video of grand failure. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the stock brakes back on this. So I can at least drive my car. Uh... Next video, we have a throttle body spacer from ZZ Performance for the 3800 in this car, and we have a wideband um, gauge to put on it to get rid of the narrowband one that just basically flashes at you. So hopefully that video is a little more successful. So yeah, I guess I'll see you guys later. Well, I figured I'd take it for a quick rip if I couldn't do the brakes. And even that didn't work out. We got cool at Ligon from somewhere. Yay. I'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs>